Kali Linux is one of the foremost tools for pen testing and OSINT investigations that exists in the world. Beyond the advantages it presents as an operating system pre-installed with expert tested tools for pen testing, it comes with the additional edge of live boot capabilities, meaning you can install an entire operating system on a flash drive. Basically, it's a computer in your pocket, making it a totally agile and destructible battle station. It's a fantastic tool if you're interested in defensive security or professional pen testing. And it's also a great way to get started with the Linux command line, which we're going to look at in this video as well. That's right, today I'm going to give you a brief intro on how to set up and use Kali Linux on a USB. <laughs> Kali Linux is essentially a Debian-specific rebuild of Backtrack Linux. In essence, just a basic Linux operating system that comes pre-installed with a library of around 600 of the most useful penetration testing and open source intelligence tools. Open source intelligence, or OSINT, refers to publicly available information that could be scraped to dox a target, i.e. to gather information and give you a sense of their vulnerabilities. Tools that use open source intelligence to gather information, along with other more aggressive tools like port scanners, password crackers, etc., are some of the best tools that you can use in a pen test as they are likely also the tools that will be leveraged against your client in a true malicious attack. Kali is great because it's often where players on both teams start, and as we all know, you need to think like your opponent in order to anticipate her play. Every pen tester is likely going to want to install some of their own favorites, saddle up my cute little git clones, and you should and will, but Kali gives you the advantage of an expert tested library of the greatest hits to start with. And if you don't want to run in non-persistent mode, Kali gives you the option of maintaining all of your favorite libraries so you don't have to install them over and over again. This is also great for presenting evidence of your workflow to clients after a pen test is complete. So how do you set up Kali on a flash drive? Let's get started. First, you need a USB drive, clearly, and an etcher. An etcher is just a software that can be used to burn an ISO, like a live operating system, to a USB. I use Belina Etcher, I will link it in the description below. One of the tutorials below also uses Rufus, so that's an option as well. And if you have another that you like better than both of those, please tell us below in the comments. Essentially, what's most important is that your etcher is reputable. Once you've downloaded your etcher, you'll need to download Kali itself. Again, the link is in the description. Make sure you select Live, as it needs to be live to be able to run off a USB. Then all you have to do is insert your USB, run your reputable etcher, locate your Kali image, and chill. Finally, turn off your machine and boot to USB. On Mac, this just means a boot hold of option, and on Windows, this means pressing F8 or F9. Then select your USB flash drive. This is the menu where you get to choose persistent or non-persistent. If you just select live, all your data will be wiped every time you eject the drive, and you'll have to reinstall all your libraries all over again. This might be helpful if you know you don't want the same libraries for every pen test, you wanna make sure you always have the most updated version of those libraries by cloning them again every time, or if a client has specific needs that require you to behave as much like an adversary as you possibly can. If you select USB persistence or USB encrypted persistence, all your data will be persistent between boots, meaning you won't have to reinstall everything all over again, and any data you gather on a client will be stored for your presentation at the end of the pen test. This is the better option if you really want to use Kali like a separate computer, but don't have a machine you want to dedicate entirely to Linux. However, even if you do want persistence, the first time you use Kali, you will have to select live, and I will show you why. Okay, so here we are in Kali. Ooh, she's so pretty. Wait, I have one more problem that I really want to solve. When I first started using Kali, you were logged in as the root user by default, and the default password was tour, as in root spelled backwards, which I thought was cute and I very much enjoyed. However, as of Kali 2020.1, you are no longer logged in as the root user by default. So rather than root slash tour, it is the much less satisfying Kali slash Kali. Merp. But here's how we can change that. Go to your terminal. If you want to check who you currently are, run who am I. Just for demonstration, in case you have multiple users and want to do this for many humans, I'm going to show you how to see them all. So we're going to cat a password file, which we happen to know is in etc. slash password. So I'm not root right now. I'm going to run sudo cat slash etc. slash passwd. So we can see root is here, but it's disabled by default. So we need to create a password for root. First, let's do a similar command to check the user groups we have. So we'll run cat slash etc. slash group. And by default, of course, root is going to be zero. Remember, computer scientists start counting with zero. So just to demonstrate, if I want to change the password for a user I have access to, all I have to do is run P-A-S-S-W-D and then the username, which right now is Kali because that's who I get logged in as by default. I can't do that for root because the root user has higher credentials than I do when I'm logged in as this Kali user. So what I have to do is run the super user command sudo tech i and then enter my password, which we know by default is Kali. And now we have root access, yes. So if I run P-A-S-S-W-D root, you can see that I can change my password. And if I want to make it Tor again, I probably won't because everyone knows that's the default. 
default password. But at least I'm not rooted and we have phenomenal cosmic power. So to create persistence, you're gonna run F disk tech L for list just to see what alt disks we have plugged in. You don't actually need the sudo because you're logged in as root, but I just didn't put the space in the first time, so it didn't work, so that's why I put it. F disk is a utility that allows us to view and configure the disk that we want. So we can see that dev slash SDA, that's my Apple computer, because you can see Apple, SSD, etc. We know that's a machine. Then dev slash SDB, that disk model says cruiser glide, that is the one we want. We know that that's my USB. So we're just gonna remember slash dev slash SDB because we're gonna use that later. So now instead of F disk tech L to list all of the disks that are available to us, we know which disk we want and that's slash dev slash SDB. So we're gonna type F disk slash dev slash SDB. It's asking us what we wanna do with the disk. We're gonna type N for new because we wanna make a new partition. Then for the rest of these prompts, we're just gonna hit enter because the defaults are gonna be fine. So it's gonna be four prompts that so we're just gonna hit enter to confirm. Great, we can see there it created a new partition of type Linux just using the default, so that's awesome. We're gonna type W to write it and it's gonna start to sync the disks. Yay! So now just to check that that worked, I'm gonna run F disk tech L again to list all of our disks and we should see, yay, there is our Linux partition. Awesome job. Now we're gonna need an ext4 file system on our partition. So we're gonna run make file system ext4 tech L persistence and then slash dev slash sdb3 because we can see above dev slash sdb3 is the location of our new Linux partition. Great, and then just for best practices, let's label it persistence. So we're gonna run e2 label slash dev slash sdb3 persistence. Now we're gonna make a directory to mount from, so mkdir tech p slash mnt for mount slash my USB because it is indeed our USB. Now we're gonna mount that disk in that directory, so we're just gonna say mount slash dev slash sdb3 and then in the directory we just made, so slash mnt slash my USB. And we need to edit the config file, so we're gonna run echo and then in quotes slash union into slash mnt slash my USB slash persistence dot conf because that's the config file. And then finally we're gonna unmount dev slash sdb3 and then we're gonna reboot, so and and reboot. So now when I reboot, when I log back in, if I select persistence, it should work. So to test that first, I'm just gonna list where I am. I'm gonna change my user back to this root user. I'm gonna change my password really fast just because that's what I want to have saved when I come back the next time. After that, I am going to make a directory, like a test directory, so I'm gonna run mkdir tester. I'm gonna cd change directory into that folder I just created and run touch testing.txt to create a file called testing.txt. There's a lot of ways to edit files from the command line, but I'm gonna just do echo and then in quotes foo bar into testing.txt to write that and then just to test it, I'm gonna run nano testing.txt and we should see, yep, it says foo bar. So here's the big test. When I reboot, that file should still be there. So if I list, I see my test directory. That's a good sign. I'm gonna CD into my test directory. I'm gonna list everything again, and I see testing.txt. If I nano into it, I see foo bar. That is satisfying. Woo, we did it. We are configured. Playtime. If we go over here, I can start to give you a taste of some of the applications that come pre-installed, and this should really illustrate what I mean about the power and dexterity of Kali. I mean, geez, dude, she's a workhorse, man. Look at all her toys. The great thing about having an operating system for pen testing on a USB like this is it gives you a great black box for testing exploits, suspicious files, etc. It's perfect for customization and a great way of starting to get comfortable with the Linux command line. Another advantage is this USB gives you the ability to gain access to other machines without necessarily having the login info. But as with all offensive advantages shared by both sides, it can be a disadvantage if you don't protect yourself from it. Be sure you configure your machines against this kind of access by configuring them to only read trusted USB devices upon insertion. On Windows, you have the option to allow or block removable devices by using the device ID. On Mac, you can disable access for mass storage devices. There's also links in the description on how to do both these things, but since this is supposed to be a Kali tutorial and it's already pretty long already. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna leave it as an exercise for you guys to do rather than do another walkthrough. But there you go. You've just set up your very own computer on a stick. A great way to practice with Kali is by going to Hack the Box or tryhackme.com and starting to play around. Kali Linux is the de facto tool you'll be using there and having a bootable USB with the OS loaded makes it super easy to get started. Just keep in mind that black hat hacking is illegal. My videos are directed at pen testers, pen testing hopefuls, and defensive security practitioners. Individuals looking 
looking to familiarize themselves with cracking tools and techniques so they can better protect themselves and others. A pen test without permission is not a pen test, it's a hack. Which again, is illegal. And please remember that I am totally self-taught as many of us are. So if you have stuff you wanna add or resources you wanna share, please link them in the comments. And also you seem very cool, we should be friends. I have linked some of the resources I use to teach myself in the description. I would like to send so much love to the dudes who created those. And of course, I am proud to remind you that this video was made in partnership with Grizzly Information Security Solutions. My pen testing posse. I love y'all, stay safe, till next time. I leave my window open, pretend you're come inside Can't fix what isn't broken, can't miss what isn't mine I drive around the city Not that anyone cares, but the little green dot thing that that Apple installed for the IF iOS 14 scared the sh out of me. Anyway, uh...